All right, so this is Chapter 8, Section 2, Special Right Triangles. Our learning objective is to use properties of 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90 triangles. One of the theorems that we are encountering in this section is the 45, 45, 90 triangle theorem. What it tells us is that our hypotenuse is equal to the square root of 2 times the leg. So whatever the value of one side of your triangle is, the hypotenuse is going to be the square root of 2 times that. Now, conversely, a leg, this is a bonus feature for you guys, a leg is going to be equal to the hypotenuse divided by the square root of 2. That's that's extra bonus feature that we won't find in the theorem explanation. So how that works is, now let me just preface this. You can use Pythagorean theorem. If you are taking a test or uh, away from your 45, 45, 90 information, you can use Pythagorean theorem. Do not let me stop you from getting the right answer. This is a way, a shortcut of the Pythagorean theorem. So all we're doing is taking Pythagorean theorem because our legs are the same length and applying it uh, to, uh, with a formula. All right, so when we look at this question here, what is the length of the hypotenuse of a 45-45-90 triangle? So what I do first every time I encounter um, a question that doesn't have a picture, I draw the picture. Um, with leg length 5 root 3. So I know my length of my leg is 5 root 3. I know this guy is 5 root 3. And I know that this is the hypotenuse. So to find the hypo to find the hypotenuse, I'm going to take my leg and I'm going to multiply it by square root of two. So I'm going to go um, our hypotenuse is equal to our leg length times the square root of two. Now all that stuff that we did in pre-algebra and at the beginning of the year in algebra. We're going to apply it here. So this is the same as 5 times root 3 times root 2. Anytime you have square roots multiplied by each other, you can multiply them together underneath the same radical. And this is actually 5 square root of 6. Could you plug this into your calculator and go 5 times square root of 6? Absolutely. And you'll get an approximate answer. But if you want an exact value, you need to um, keep the square root. All right, we're going to do the same thing for number 2, the length of a hypotenuse of a 45-45-90 triangle. So, of course, I'm going to draw the picture because a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, the hypotenuse is 10, and then the leg, we're going to call it S. That one, S. <laughs> so, I gave you the formula up here. A leg is equal to the hypotenuse divided by the square root of 2. So here's my s is equal to 10 divided by square root of 2. And I'm going to give you a bonus right here. Because mathematicians do not like square roots in the denominator. So when that happens, you have to multiply by square root of 2 over square root of 2. And that is equal to 10 root 2 
over square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the number 2. And if I simplify that out, 10 divided by 2 is 5, so this is actually equal to 5 root 2. And the reasoning says, in problem 2, why can you multiply 6 over root 2 by root 2 over root 2? What is this number equivalent to? Square root of 2 divided by the square root of 2 is equivalent to which number? 1. one. So you can multiply anything by 1 and it doesn't change its value. That's why we do it this way. So if you encounter a problem where you have the square root of 2 in the denominator, you must multiply the top and the bottom by that square root. Unfortunately. It's an extra math step. Alright, so the next scenario, that was 45, 45, 90. The next scenario we're going to discuss is the 30, 60, 90. All we're saying is that the angles inside the triangle are 30, 60, and 90. So, can you use the Pythagorean theorem to solve these? Yes, absolutely. This is supposed to be a shortcut to that. It's not going to feel like a shortcut for a while until you get used to how it, the ebb and flow of it. So, in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the hypotenuse is equal to 2 times the shorter leg. The longer leg is equal to square root of 3 times the shorter leg. And then, so your short leg is equal to your hypotenuse divided by 2. It's also equal to your long leg divided by root 3. Those are two extra bonus formulas that... They do not give you in the book. So if we look at this problem here, what is the value of D in simplest form? We know that D is the short. We know that 5 is the long and F is the hypotenuse. Please make sure you label those because it's easy when you're running around calculating to get lost in who is who. And I tell that because the long side is the, hypo the, the hypotenuse is across from the 90, the long side is across from the 60, and the short side is across from the 30. Okay, to solve this, we've got our longer leg is equal to square root of 3 times the shorter leg. We're going to start out with that formula. We go 5 is equal, because that's the longer leg, to d times the square root of 3. So if I divide both sides by square root of 3, I get that our short side is equal to 5 divided by root 3. This is a scenario we have radical in the denominator. We need to multiply the top and the bottom by root 3 and root 3. So when we do that, we get 5 root 3. And square root of 3 times square root of 3 is the number 3. So d is equal to 5 root 3 over 3. Let's look at this little got it problem here. In problem 4, what is the value of f in simplest radical form? So if we go to our... I'm holding the pen. So f is our hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is 2 times the shorter leg. We take the value of the shorter leg, just regular five, and we multiply it by two. So that gives me 10 root 3 over 3. 3 doesn't go into 10, so I can't simplify that down. And that's the end of our information from this group.